Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kessler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Henrique Miranda. Okay, he just got his call sign, but he doesn't list it on here. Um, he has for years been a GMRS operator and found that to work very well. Most GMRS operation is simplex. Uh, you talk to people near you, um, although there are some GMRS repeaters, okay? And there's limits on how much power you can put out and so on. And so he became a ham. Uh, and congratulations to him for doing that and has his technician license. Now, since he is used to operating simplex, he's trying to do that on two meters. And he's looking for people to talk to. And um, he's running into a difference between ham radio and GMRS. Plus, he's trying to do his work on uh, DMR over simplex channels. Now, uh, there's a lot going on here and before we jump into it and talk about it I want to say a special thank you to Tim uh, Baton for being one of my newest uh, patrons you too can become a patron of uh, this channel by going to patreon.com slash ke0og and while you're doing that don't forget to like and subscribe now let's take a look at his question here uh, he expresses a lot of frustration. What he finds when he tries to use simplex channels, and I'm assuming he's in a fairly populated area, although simplex channels are supposed to be open to everyone, what happens in uh, larger cities is that little groups of people will tend to form around a particular simplex channel. And uh, I know, for example, our club, always uses the same simplex frequency when we do events like uh, at races or uh, bicycling events or something like that. We will use the same simplex frequency. And people get rather possessive of these frequencies. Yes, it is true that the uh, FCC regulations in Part 97 state very clearly that nobody owns a frequency. Now, in the case of repeaters, if you insist on operating on the repeater input, you are uh, going to find yourself in hot water with the FCC. Not a good idea. So there are limitations to this idea of nobody owns a frequency idea. In heavily populated areas, it's very hard to find a simplex frequency that isn't in use by some little group or things like that. Like when my wife and I go on trips where we're in separate vehicles, we'll use a frequency that's a simplex frequency, and that could be a frequency that is in use by other people. One time we were in tandem like that going through the desert, and somebody came on and says, you can't use this frequency, we're using it. And we figured out enough that they were fixed users, so I told my wife, don't worry, we'll get 10 miles beyond them and then we won't hear them anymore, So, which was the case. And that's hard to do if you're in a fixed place. Um, as far as using DMR for simplex, you can do it, yes. Yes, it does work. But it's rare, it's really rare that people talk to each other on DMR on simplex. So... What I would like you to do as a new technician is to focus on the repeaters. Your radio that you have that will do DMR will also do FM, just ordinary FM, so that you can talk on repeaters. Don't forget on two meters, there's a 600 kilohertz offset that's either a plus or a minus, depending on what's in the repeater book. And on... Uh, 70 centimeters, there's a five megahertz offset. Again, plus or minus, depending on what's in the repeater book. You will find that the repeaters tend to attract larger groups of people, are more uh, accepting of newcomers, 
Often the repeaters are either loosely or tightly associated with a particular club. So, uh, for example, in our club, Montrose here, there's a repeater up in Cedar Edge um, that is sort of the, the gathering spot for people from our club. So this is something to think about, uh, is moving to repeaters. And don't use DMR on simplex. Yes, you can, but it's easier to use it on a repeater. Okay, remember that DMR repeaters can handle two conversations at once that they don't hear each other. So if you're taking up one of the channels, you're not taking up the other, and so on. And the DMR repeater owner will have specific instructions for how to do that. Plus, if you get into a repeater uh, that gets a DMR and you signal to go into a particular talk group that sits somewhere in cyberspace in the cloud, okay, it might be a talk group aimed at people in Indiana or in Chicago, or maybe Heathkit owners, or something like that. There's a talk group for everything. You can find lots of things to talk to. Now, another thing you can do with your DMR signal, or any digital signal, is get a hotspot. Uh, this one was sent to me by somebody in San Diego. This hotspot right here um, comes to us from uh, Bridgecom Systems, and it's a cute little thing there. They're all about the same size. They're built on a Raspberry Pi computer, and they have a little RF board on them. And basically, you use your radio on low power to talk to this, and then that goes directly to the internet and finds the chat group that you want to chat with, okay? So, First of all, let me on behalf of Amateur Radio apologize to you that some people are jerks on two meters or even 70 centimeters. They want to hog a frequency to themselves. There's no point in going to war with them. You'll lose. You'll get very frustrated. You'll give up on ham radio. I want you to persevere. Either find a simplex frequency or find a group of people you like to talk to. But what you really need to do is move to using repeaters. You'll have to do a little bit of repeater shopping in most areas, even out here in very lightly populated western Colorado. Uh, there are uh, lots of repeaters. Get on the repeaters and with your DMR, explore the idea of a hotspot because then you can talk to any of those talk groups around the world. Now note that will also work if you're using D-Star or System Fusion. All of these little things will do uh, any of those. You set it up for the way that you want to do it. And these cost around $200, maybe $250 uh, for one of them. So it's about the same as the cost of your radio but gives you lots of things to do. The other thing you can do is upgrade to general um, and get on the HF bands. On 80 meters, there are a lot of people who think they own a frequency. And so you try and get on it. Uh, if you called CQ and they say, this, there's a net ready to start in five minutes. We're gonna use this frequency. You know, 80 meters is full of that. That's why I don't like 80 meters. Uh, 40 meters, 20 are good CQ calling bands and so on. You can do well with those. Okay, so yes, there are jerks in any walk of life. Uh, there are even some in ham radio. Ignore them. Go find a place where you can be with people you enjoy. This is going to involve a little club, club shopping or repeater shopping to find out where you want to hang out. And then the world of DMR is just vast. The various um, talk groups that you can go into, I think D-Star called some rooms. They're basically party lines. Uh, anybody who's into it, one talks, everybody else can listen, and so on. So there you have it. I'm sorry, I wish it were nicer, but ham radio is a technical hobby. It is complicated. It's not as easy as some people may make it out to be. There are things to do, things to be aware of. There are easy ways to get your feelings hurt. Please persevere. Promise me you'll persevere, okay? And keep going until you get to the point 
where you're in with a group of people that you like and upgrade to general while you're at it. So there you have it. If you have watched this far in the video, you might be interested in helping support this channel financially by going to decastercom support and finding a way that works for you. And until we next meet, 73.